Uh, up next, I, I want to bring in um, my, my new friend, um, uh, Volodymyr Usov from Ukraine, uh, talking a little bit about space and its importance uh, relative to the conflict in uh, Ukraine with Russia and that horrible war that's going on right now, and how, again, how interdependent we are um, and how dependent we are on technology. So with that, uh, let's, let's turn this over to a conversation we had earlier. Well, hello, everyone. Um, I have the great honor of being with Vladimir Usov, uh, the former head of the Ukrainian uh, Space Agency, and also the head of Kurs Orbital, who's uh, joining us from the Ukraine. Uh, it's wonderful to have you here, sir, and I want to thank you for joining us today. Thank you, David, for having me here today. Uh, thanks for an opportunity to spread the word about what's going on in Ukraine right now, about our space policy. And of course, on behalf of the Ukrainian people and Ukrainian space industry, we are thankful for all the support we get on a personal level from uh, people in the United States and on the level of government. We appreciate it and we understand that we are not alone in this fight for our freedom and independence. And uh, we are having our war and fight not only for something which is really important for Ukrainian people, but I believe for something that we share as uh, democratized nations, uh, not only in Europe, but also in North America, in the United States. So thanks again for what you're doing for Ukraine. Uh, actually, I will start with uh, giving some context on uh, how what people in Ukrainian government were thinking about space changed changed significantly on, after the start of the invasion in February. Because if you see, it's not only about Ukraine, but a lot of other European nations and not only European who are thinking that space is not so critical for national defense, that uh, you shouldn't spend a lot of money on space because it's expensive. And uh, you should maybe spend on something much more uh, clear and uh, down to earth, practical. Down, down to earth, it will be easier to explain uh, after and before the elections. So, mm -hmm. and I think now we see completely different picture because if we talk about uh, having enough data information, not only for a military uh, intelligence or just to plan and organize uh, what's going on on battlefield, but also to fix all that atrocities being done by Russian army and troops. I think that's almost impossible without having really high precision remote sensing services. Unfortunately, Ukraine did not have a constellation of own high precision satellites in space. Uh, there were like years of discussions. Uh, should we have it? What satellites should we get into orbit? When we should do it? But still discussion, discussion. And at the end of the day, uh, we couldn't get any uh, image by our own satellite because we had none of them in space. That's why we related on the, on the imagery we received from our allies and partners in the United States, uh, from European uh, Space Agency, from companies like Maxar who contributed a lot with their space imagery. And the whole world really saw the face of this invasion that it's not about liberating people in the south of Ukraine or somewhere else in the world. It's all about uh, absolutely clear atrocities and uh, aggressive invasion Russian troops have been performing in Ukraine. And the war which started in February is not actually a war which started in February. It started in 2014. Mm -hmm. when we see Crimea was occupied by Russian Federation and then part of Lugansk and Donetsk regions. Uh, unfortunately, the reaction back then was not so uh, like radical we anticipated it to be, and now we see what can be the outcomes of that reaction back then. But now I think having all that support, uh, we actually are acting as uh, one coalition of nations who share the same values. And unfortunately, uh, it would be almost impossible to uh, deliver the truth about what's happening there without remote sensing services and satellite imagery, uh, because you've seen that uh, image with the theater in Mariupol with a sign mm -hmm. children in front of that, and still it was destroyed and bombed. Uh, and people who did that absolutely clearly understood what they have been doing then, and still they destroyed that uh, infrastructure object with people and children inside. 
uh, I'm sure it would be impossible to show these facts to the global community without having this satellite imagery, but now we have it. And it's only one use case. We had tens or like hundreds of them all over the place in other regions in Kharkiv, in Kyiv region, in the southern part of Ukraine. And uh, counting on the imagery we're receiving from our partners and allies, we will be able to document all of these atrocities in order for international courts after the uh, invasion will be over and Ukraine will gain its freedom and independence. I think that will be the first ever use case on international level where a lot of facts will be documented based on the satellite imagery, not otherwise. And we should understand that every nation who claims to be independent and being a space nation need to have its own constellation. Of course, it's good to partner with other nations or private mm -hmm. companies, but at least you need to have some uh, autonomous access to satellite imagery based on your own space capacity and infrastructure in your own country. So that was a lesson I sure um, Ukraine learned. And uh, as I talk now to the uh, chairman of the space agency, they're bringing some uh, new ideas to the national space program that will be uh, accepted by the parliament and the government, which will uh, align all the efforts to build own constellation of Ukrainian satellites. And I'm sure it would be done in partnership with the uh, key players in the United States and in Europe, because we need that support and we need that partnership in future as well. So the second lesson learned regarding the autonomous of communication services. Uh, there were a lot of skeptics about uh, Starlink project and other projects like uh, OneWeb, uh, we see and now Kuiper is coming from Amazon. That's something that maybe doesn't have any sense uh, with like thousands of satellites in low Earth orbit if you can get just your average uh, Wi-Fi connection and the cable internet, which works perfectly fine and nothing happens with that. Uh, yes, it is. But when you are under the invasion or under uh, war uh, conditions and circumstances, uh, we saw that the first thing goes down is traditional cable internet. And in, in the use cases we had uh, in Kharkiv, also in Mariupol, in other places where Russia actually destroyed all the infrastructure, or which is what's like uh, in charge of uh, the traditional communication support and internet for the communities and big cities. Uh, the only option to connect people with each other uh, was Starlink. And uh, it worked perfectly fine uh, under the severe conditions of war and uh, I was pretty amazed when I saw the first data coming in regarding the number of the Starlink app downloads. Uh, about three months ago, I think about 60% of all Starlink app downloads were in Ukraine. So Ukraine had more than 50% of the global Starlink usage, <laughs> which is That's absolutely great. That's uh, great. for a country of 40 million people, but unfortunately who appear to find themselves in these conditions uh, we found ourselves. So, and it worked out uh, mm -hmm. and I think uh, you cannot think about more sustainable uh, way of communicate people with each other than having your infrastructure in orbit. Uh, of course, theoretically it can be destroyed, it can go down, but resources you need to put to make this happen is uncomparable to the resources you can use to destroy the uh, stations on the ground. Well That's said. why having your capacity in orbit for communication will get you much more resilient uh, in the situations you, you, you have under the threat from the invasion of countries like Russia or potentially some other countries you may think mm -hmm. about. So mm -hmm. I think that lesson two Ukraine learned is actually having its capacity for communication satellites or just having a reliable service provided by it. Uh, I think that having your own constellation of tens of thousands of satellites for every nation is not sustainable model. payable demand to bring satellites in orbit, but uh, nothing good for uh, sustainability in space logistics. So I think having several big players on this market, as we already see, they're deploying their constellations, Starlink, OneWeb, Kuiper, maybe new constellation from European Space Agency. I think for now it will be enough to cover the global demand we have. 
Uh, of course, this is what a corner case with a war and invasion, but it already works really good with the distant and remote uh, communities all over the world in North America and Europe and Southeast Asia. So I think after Ukrainian war, it's getting absolutely clear to everyone that this approach works. It worth investment, it worth development, and I think we will have new generation of satellites in orbit covering our communication needs. Uh, and I'm happy that we work with our uh, partners and allies in the United States in the SpaceX with the support of Elon Musk to make it happen. And still we see uh, terminals coming to Ukraine and we have an official representation of the SpaceX Starlink in Ukraine. I think maybe the first European country mm -hmm. Having mm -hmm. this capacity demand and having an official uh, offices, so I think that was another lesson which learned not only by Ukraine but by other countries as well. So having your remote sensing capacity critical, having your communication capacity also critical because you can have your eyes in space, but if you cannot communicate, it will don't uh, lead you to the results you you want to achieve. So I think that Ukraine uh, for now really look different at these two critical uh, infrastructure capacity uh, we, we, we should implement into our new uh, national space program. And I see that our government and both the leadership of the Ukrainian Space Agency uh, agree with this uh, and actually working on implementing it as a part of the new pipeline of the project. Uh, also, I think that for now, if we're talking about uh, own constellation of satellites, both remote sensing purposes or for communication purposes, uh, we need to understand that satellites won't uh, go to orbit on their own. We need an autonomous access to space to make it happen. And autonomous access to space is also connected to ground infrastructure. It's expensive, it's complicated, and it's very visible for potential adversaries. So I think that uh, mm. if we talk about really being a space independent nation and having autonomous access to space, we need to figure out what should be at least uh, the really cost efficient way to launch satellites into space without being too visible. Being at risk, yeah. Opponent. And I think in this case, air launch capabilities. Can like Virgin Orbit. Solution. I think uh, something that we, with, with what Virgin Orbit does, it's a good example. Uh, there's an older program by Northrop Grumman with Pegasus, uh, which is not so like popular and doesn't show a lot of launches, but the idea is still here. So we can do a launch uh, wherever you need it. Uh, in case of Virgin Orbit, you have this bright plane and the rocket under the wing, but there's another solution where you can have a rocket inside the plane and you can use standard medium range aircraft. There's one of the projects now being developed uh, in Ukraine for air launch capacity, which the Orbit Boy project I'm also involved in, in cooperation and collaboration with Poland and also with UK and with Italy. And I think this uh, approach for Ukraine will be uh, really uh, great as it gives a chance to do the launch, which can be a real emergency launch. Uh, and if we will be utilizing a small fuel rocket, we won't need a special infrastructure for fueling rockets prior to start. So it can be done like in 24, 48 hours, and it can be done on board of a medium range aircraft. So nobody will understand the rocket going out until it's on the altitude of 10,000 meters. So there will be a chance to replace the satellite in case you need it, or just to deploy um, three, four, five new micro satellites in case of uh, emergency. So I think connecting the dots with the need of uh, remote sensing services, communication services, and autonomous capacity to bring this uh, infrastructure into orbit. This should be like three pillows of the Ukrainian space uh, program. And uh, I think that we already have uh, support from our partners globally for implementing this uh, project. Uh, Ukraine signed Artemis Accords uh, during my leadership in the agency in 2020. And that was a clear signal that Ukraine is a reliable partner you can count on. Ukraine has great heritage technology, which resulted in like tens and even hundreds of successful launches of uh, rockets and spacecraft. Even now we are in uh, the Antares program with Nortogram and also mm -hmm. with Vega project with Avio in Italy in European Space Agency. 
And despite all this uh, tragic uh, circumstances uh, we are working on, we're still uh, working on our responsibilities and we perform launches with our partners. And I hope that after the end of the war, we will actually transform space industry in a way uh, through the corporate reform. So we'll have uh, less state enterprise, more private companies, which will both compete and collaborate. And we will create the ecosystem of space companies in Ukraine, which can be then integrated into the global space industry supply chain because we do not need to build everything from scratch on our own. We need to understand where are the white blades in the global market and where mm -hmm. we can bring the value. Not competing with our partners or allies, but actually helping them contributing to developing technology, which is not now on the market, such on orbit servicing technology, which will contribute to clearing working orbits for generations to come or extend satellite commercial lifetime. That's what we're doing in our company with Orbital. And of course, launch services with the uh, idea of uh, Uber of space where you can do and perform an air launch based on emergency need and on demand uh, without showing your visibility to potential adversaries. I think that's also very important. Uh, altogether, Ukraine is a space nation with more than 400 successful launches of rockets and satellites. Unfortunately, industry was hugely underfunded during the last decade. And uh, we see right now that the results of that are not so good for Ukraine as we lost our uh, infrastructure and capacity, which we needed right now under the mm -hmm. circumstances of the invasion. Of course, we counted on our partners, allies, uh, but having your own infrastructure and having support from allies is much better than having only support from allies. That's why I think this lesson learned and uh, during the next five years, Ukraine will get a national space program it deserves uh, and uh, will implement the project I covered shortly during our conversation. Uh, we already understand who is the pool of our partners. And right now we see the commitment from uh, a lot of nations in European uh, space uh, agency from US, from NASA. And I understand that they sacrifice maybe some uh, business project they have with Russia or some money they cannot make from business collaborations. But there are some things which, there are times when values are higher than prices. And I think that's actually the time we're living in. And at the end of the day, building collaboration with the nations and the people who you share uh, same beliefs, uh, same principles, at the end of the day, will make you more profit than like current discount on some rocket launches you can get from countries like Russia. Yeah, well so said. maybe there were some mistakes made on both sides. In Ukraine, do not understanding uh, what problems we will get, not developing our autonomous access to space, our constellation of satellites working with Russia until 2014. Also, maybe there are some misunderstanding with the European Space Agency who counted really heavily on the capacity from Soyuz launch vehicles. And right now it makes a lot of problems for them. Uh, this also covers scientific exploration because if you have Russia as your partner in space exploration, it actually makes a lot of harm to other nations who participate in that. Because if you do something with Russia, somebody will think that you share the same beliefs and principle and approach mm -hmm. with Russia. Does. That's why we have these problems with ExoMars missions and some others. But I think that at the end of the day, we see a light in the end of this tunnel and we will become stronger after we will get out from this uh, war and invasion with more powerful alliance behind us. Uh, Ukraine made its choice and we showed this choice to all worlds. We do not surrender. We sacrifice a lot to show that we are a European nation and share the same principle with our partners. And still we have a lot of capacity and a lot of great technology and heritage and uh, experience and great highly qualified professionals who will contribute to the development of the global space missions and space exploration for peaceful purposes. And uh, looking forward with belief and thankful to our partners and allies, I think that getting out from this disaster will make us stronger. Not only Ukraine, but our partners and allies as well. So well said, sir. Well, well, thank you, sir. Uh, you've just articulated, I think, a half dozen key principles and lessons learned. It's a horrible way for us, the world to learn these lessons, 
that I hope we take them to heart. I'm sure several that we've learned. The thing that I think that Ukraine has demonstrated is that it is a, a people of immense resilience and bravery, resolve, courage, et cetera. And uh, I, I pre you were very gracious early on saying that you're appreciative of what America has done, but I would like to say that we need to do much more. Uh, the example that you have led is uh, one for the entire world to take note of, and everyone in the world needs to support the Ukrainian people, your fight, uh, your autonomy, your freedom, and uh, the, uh, the country is lucky to have leaders like you and the other leaders fighting this fight. So we're honored to have you speak. You, we'd love to have you come back anytime and share what you think that Americans need to understand and the rest of the world needs to understand with regard to your fight and how we can help. I just want to thank you and I salute you. Thank David. Appreciate your support and Ukraine appreciate support it's receiving from the whole world. And I think that Ukraine will surprise the world once again with a great technology and the great cover, courage and the great honor of people for fighting today for themselves and for the whole world. So thank you very much. Well said. Well, thanks for being with us. We look forward to talking with you again soon, sir. Thanks, David. God bless. God bless. So I'm not going to say anything other than please uh, let's all support you in Ukraine and their, their fight in this uh, horrible war with Russia.